Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community. And The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 361 of the daily of the delayed Daily Beaver Morning Show here yeah. on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah, and thanks for your patience. I'm your host, <laughs> the eager beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. Eh? And today, recording day is Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. Uh, tech gremlins kind of got the best of us, but we remained calm. We carried on. Mr. Grizzly got the problem fixed, and here we are. And as Kit Michael says, a delayed beaver is better than no beaver. <laughs> well, this, yeah, this, <laughs> my apologies. My, uh, no I need to up. apologize. Well, no, it's like the Wi-Fi. I'm like, why is my Wi-Fi router dead? So I reset it multiple times. I looked at the cable modem, and it's like showing everything performing correctly. And I used to install this stuff, so it's like, pff, whatever. Okay, let's reset the modem. Let's reset the router. Still not working multiple times. So finally, I just said, I'm just going to patch this computer directly into the modem and reset it again and still wouldn't work reset it a third time fourth time i don't know and all of a sudden oh okay it's working but it's taking a minute to clear the cache on everything and anyway it's, it's it was a very frustrating start to my day not how i oh. wanted my day to start oh, a big po- thank you goes to our podcast funding sponsors the pepper master the miss Fee mysteries from covid moon publishing and canadian tarot.com we'll have a little uh, nibble for you today uh but uh i want to ask how your mental health is doing today but it seems that you, it's okay you saved the day yeah, no, it's, I'm good. I'm good, actually. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> trust me, if it wasn't for Mr. Grizzly and finally able to fix the problem, I wouldn't be here right now. So, <laughs> Well, Bridget suggested, she says, could you do it from your phone? I'm like, yes, I can. But it's not, you know, <laughs> it's not ideal. No. Uh, it's one of those things, like, if I can get everything set up on the computer, I can transfer to my phone. That's easy. But to, to run the whole show and start one from the phone, yes, you can do it. It's really <sighs> scrongly, to say the least. Scrongly. It's an ideal situation. Katrano dances, spank the top of your head, Paul. You'll feel better. <laughs> that was all Fox. Morning all. There was some cussing at Mr. Grizzly Studio this morning. <laughs> <laughs> there was no cussing at the beaver lodge but there was a lot there was a lot of like huh because yeah. i mean let's put it this way it's like we're getting close to four years having done this yeah and very 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 rare very rare are the times that i belly up to the computer and he's not already here <laughs> i usually have this ready to roll by 6 30 right yeah exactly and this morning had had things been working that would have been the case i went and took took lola out for a walk we were out for about 30 minutes she saw some squirrels met some dogs 
brought her back in, I sat down, I started to do some work, and I'm like, why is everything just slagging? And then I pick up my phone and I look at it and I go, oh yeah, the Wi-Fi is out, great. So yeah, proceeded from there. But here we are. And today, of yes. course, is big budget day. Budget day. It's budget day. It's budget day. It's budget day. It's budget day. <laughs> and of course, for the occasion, <clears throat> you've got the top hat too. Well, yes. And um, there it goes. Why is my camera? Know, that, that's the second no. time in a couple of days that my camera goes all fuzzy every time. I, hold on, let's try to do that. Uh, that usually can work. Uh, do the do the three D house of pancakes. Go real oh, yeah. close with your face. Here I am. Oh, three D beaver. Ooh. <laughs> there. Kind of. Almost. <laughs> okay, let's give it some time. Slowly back away. I see you. Look at all the people down there. They look like ants. It's very distinct. <laughs> Uh, uh, we'll just, it does not want to cooperate. Uh, it's just the kind of day we're having, right? Uh, clearly, the all tech. The tech gremlins. All the tech gremlins are going to be haunting us today, it seems. That's okay. Right. That's we'll, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll muster through. Look, it's better to have... I'll do a quick uh, jump in and out and see if that works for me. Yeah, okay. Better to have. It's better to have a show with, you know, a couple of niggly things here. Niggly? Is niggly a word? Niggly? Problematic? Wonky? Orky? When things go borky, when things bork, 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 uh, sometimes it's that's okay as long as we still are able to function properly. So there, see that worked. Success. Just your mic there. there when in doubt, reboot or uh, log, so. log back in or jiggle it or give it a whack or whatever. Uh, here's my uh, or, top hat. Ah, uh, there you go. Uh, uh, okay, well, let's see if that happens twice now. No, it doesn't. Good. Okay. Yeah, so we're, we're, Matching tab heights. There we go. Oh, should I go get that? Bow tie as well. I have a red bow, bow tie. Bow tie and monocle. Uh, I have a monocle yes. and a bow tie. <laughs> so it's budget day. <laughs> if anybody just tunes in right now, they're like, a little dusty. "Are they wearing top hats?" <laughs> well, yes, yes, we are wearing top hats. Uh, yes. Oh, uh, there we go. Because uh, the kids demand glamour. <laughs> So, kiddies, today we have the budget. Uh, see, see, see. There's going to be lots of money talking about, see? So, W.C. Fields, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> look them up. Look them up. I'm going to take my windfall and go build a house on a boardwalk or park place. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm a little tricky. Uh. <laughs> just missing monocles. This Mr. Yeah. Mr. Grizzly has one, by the way. I, just, I, don't, I don't know where it is right now. It's stuffed yeah, in that, the drawer that, with the rest of my Sir me. Black's outfit. Yes, it reminds me we haven't had a visit from Percival lately. Well, <laughs> so Black would like to come by and say hello for the, for this morning. You know, you do understand, of course, Sir Black was uh, born in Canada post confederation 1868 you see so i am a canadian citizen you see and uh, we, we we do like to attend the uh, rugby canadian rugby football union matches at the uh, the lansdowne park or they call it something else i think today it's called td place they've named it after a financial institution which i think is rather strange you know but uh, anyway to myself and, um, and, and and sir reds we we like to attend the red blacks matches I, I, and they are starting off on uh, June 30th this year. Ooh, that's a lovely and, day. And, well, and, and there's going to be a rock and roll outfit that will play before the show at halftime and have fireworks. And the name of the outfit Ooh, I love is a good outfit. Big Wreck will be playing at Ooh. the live show. So I'm quite looking forward to that as I have seen those minstrels play in the past. And they are wonderful musicians who put on a very outstanding show. Mm. Well, a train wreck always loves a good big wreck. Well, yes, <laughs> Would you like some tea? Maybe a little cookie for Duncan. A uh, crumpet, perhaps. I have yes, a sir. bitter bit of crocanti for you. Alright, enough silliness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Timing G. Oliver twist vibes. <laughs> All right, All right. Let's just take that off. Please, kids, may I have some more? <laughs> Uh, a... <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 
<laughs> we are classy critters. All right, get some cups. <laughs> Today is indeed a budget day. Uh, yes. Madame Christian Freeland uh, has purchased her new shoes, as is the tradition. Uh, she got herself uh, as is tradition pair of black leather shoes that were uh, fabricated or manufactured by. Uh, Millennial sisters in Montreal who have started a direct to home uh, fashion or shoe company. Oh, um, so, and uh, that is the reason for that, of course, is because uh, the focus and the target of this government is Generation Z, as Mr. Grizzly likes to say, and millennials. Um, so, yes, uh, the McGuire Shoe Company is the company uh, in question to which uh, she gave a little bit of visibility. Hopefully, their business numbers will go up a little bit. Um, but, yes, um, polling seems to be indicating that uh, Gen Z and millennials are at least flirting uh, with voting conservatives. So um, they are looking to have a budget chock full of measures, particularly with regard to home ownership uh, that will appeal to that generation. Um, today also, uh, later on, will uh, inflation numbers will be coming out this morning. Uh, in the United States, uh, inflation uh, did go up recently, and uh, if you have any investments in the stock market, you will have noticed over the past couple of days that uh, the stock market kind of uh, went crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think the TSX, I think the TSX has dropped over a thousand points over like the, the last three or four days, uh, but that's all on the basis that uh, because uh, inflation went up uh, four tenths of a percent in the United States, that uh, potentially the Federal Reserve uh, there will slow down or delay. Uh, interest rate cuts in the United States and may even delay them until sometime next year. Uh, in Canada, it is expected that um, rates will stay relatively stable. It might, uh, last time it came in at 2.8%, they're thinking, some uh, economists are saying it might go up to 3% given uh, the price of gas had gone up a little bit in uh, the month of March. Uh, economists are saying that it likely accelerated, but not enough to throw the Bank of Canada off course. Uh, the marketings are forecasting uh, that it went from 2.8 to 3, uh, but the 2.8 was a surprise slowdown uh, that nobody had expected last month. Um, in Canada, if uh, the jump isn't as uh, isn't as high, uh, because the difference with the United States is that unemployment in the United States is still going down, whereas in Canada over the last year it's gone up one point. So uh, the Bank of Canada is looking for um, slightly rising unemployment uh, with inflation within a certain range over a certain amount of time, and then uh, they will announce a rate cut, which everybody's expecting will still happen in June. Uh, as we mentioned on the previous show, though, the governor of the Bank of Canada, when he made his uh, policy rate announcement a few days ago, uh, went through great pains, great, great, great pains to try to uh, give himself a whole bunch of wiggle room uh, as to the date of an interest rate cut uh, after he was finished making his announcement, the first journalist just said, uh, so will there be an interest rate cut in June? <laughs> and I was like, oh, God damn, work with me here, people. So <laughs> and people did not work with him. And then he, was, uh, he had to say well, that it is not outside of the realm of possibilities. It was about as precise as he could get. <laughs> um, but the context for the inflation numbers, as we mentioned on yesterday's show today, will be uh, uh, will frame some of the conservative response if inflation goes up 0.2% to 3%. Uh, then Pierre Polyev is going to be blaming the budget, that on the budget, uh, which obviously is ridiculous because, I mean, the budget hasn't even tabled yet. And then, you know, as we mentioned on a previous show, while they were doing their main estimates, the supplementary estimates still have to go through committee and be voted on and whatnot. And then the money, after the vote, then the money actually has, you know, everybody has to get the okay to actually spend the money and then money actually has to start being spent. So, I mean, this is not going to happen for a while yet, right? Uh, so to try to represent that today's budget raised the inflation or the spending announced in this budget raised the inflation. No, inflation is things that actually did happen. Right. It measures stuff that did happen. So uh, just don't be fooled on that because if there's an increase in any way whatsoever, he's going to go, see, see, see. 
Um, there is a lot of different statements uh, all over the uh, former Bank of Canada, uh, Governor David Dodge, and uh, I probably should take a little look to see uh, who it was that appointed David Dodge, if it was a, a conservative or a liberal appointee. And I'm not saying uh, that because I'm saying that they're necessarily in the bag, but usually... Uh, if a prime minister gets to choose the governor of the Bank of Canada, they're somewhat, hopefully, mm -hmm. aligned uh, overall with what they meant, even though they don't get any direction. Um, let's see. I know he was appointed in 2001, so it definitely was not. You know, that was a Chrissy Martin appointment. Um, he is uh, among the more pessimistic uh, of the ones out there. Um, he is uh, one of the people that is uh, really, really, really not for an increase in taxes on the wealthy or on businesses. Yes. Um, everybody is making the same statement that we hear all our lives. Oh my God, you can't raise taxes, not even one-tenth of a percent on the, on the wealthy or the business or else they'll take all their employment and bring it offshore to another nation and we'll... No, they uh, won't. The earth will stop turning, gravity will stop and we'll all go, go fly off. Um, I had a friend a couple of years ago, we had a conversation around something just like that. And we were talking about a particular large airline, particular large carrier in Canada, the one that's in the air from Canada. Mm. And, um, he said, and this was an individual who used to sign the checks, mm. like was involved heavily with the budget uh, from a, from a very high level. And he said, point blank, let them fail. He says, we, we shouldn't bail them out. He says, we mm -hmm. shouldn't let them fail. He says, and, and you know, of course everybody goes, well, people are going to lose their jobs. He goes, and we have a social safety net to take care of them. They will get some payments. And then I guarantee you another company will come in and fill the place of that one. Mm -hmm. Because if there is no big carrier, it's, it's, it's a gap. The gap will be filled. Somebody will come in. There was an economist in 2008 who said, let all the car companies fail. Let them yeah. fail. Yep. Because what, you think we're never going to have cars again? You think somebody's not going to come in and fill that gap? All the cars still have to be made. People still need them. Industry needs them. So yeah, sometimes we just need to let those things fall flat on their face. And of course, every time the, and this guy, by the way, this guy is a, a lifelong liberal, not a mm. con, lifelong liberal. And he said, let them fail. So the cons will be threatening with, they're just going to leave. It's like, no, they won't. And if they do, who cares? Yeah. The, there's a gap in the market. If they leave, somebody will fill that gap. Nature abhors a vacuum. <laughs> well, I mean. No, no, but seriously. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, somebody needs to make the widgets. Yeah. They only, exactly. And. When they say, I mean, I'm not all for like, you know, just letting the whole industry fail. Um, but um, if there happens to be nothing in the budget for post media that had terrible second Ooh. quarter results. Um, oh, well. Yeah. Revenue. Second quarter operating results. Revenue for the quarter was 97.3 million as compared to 111.8 million in the same period the prior year, representing a decrease of $14.5 million. The revenue decrease was primarily due to decreases in advertising revenue and circulation revenue, partially offset by increases in parcel revenue. So uh, in other words, Postmedia, uh, maybe the fact that over the course of one year, your revenues dropped by greater than 10% might be a sign that you're producing a trash project product that nobody wants to either read or advertise in. Maybe it's your business model. Could Maybe be. it's your content. Uh, so yeah, I uh, would definitely have no problem with uh, the federal government letting that one die. Um, but <laughs> yes, normally, uh, yes, let the entire auto industry die is probably not a smart move. No. Um, no. So, uh, David Dodge specifically, speaking of cars, Dodge, but um, <laughs> is very, very, very negative saying that the, the federal budget is likely to be the worst in years. So, you know, conservatives will be quoting him left, right, and center. Oh yes. Yeah. Right. Something he hasn't seen yet. And he already he's called like that was years ago. I lost a lot of respect for Jack Layton when he pulled that stunt with Harper. Look, 
Yeah. I was no fan of Harper, but he just said, I'm voting against it because it's Stephen Harper's budget, so I know it'll be bad. It's like, dude, you haven't read it yet. Yeah. Well, this one is like, there, there will be a tax increase of some kind on someone. And Christopher Freeland, as we mentioned yesterday, targeted, you know, like this, if you're middle class one, it's not going to be you. So it's obviously going to be the rich or it's going to be a wealth tax mm -hmm. or a tax on excess profits or something like that. And then, of course, we all say, oh, my God, you can't tax business. Oh, goes, well, yeah, actually, we can. And just watch us. So <laughs> it's like, watch. you'll cope. Business people, you'll cope. <laughs> Rich people, I'm sure you'll muddle through somehow. You'll be all right. Somehow. And you might have to slip your account at an extra five or ten thousand dollars to find for him to, or her to find a loophole for you to get out of it. But I'm sure you'll survive somehow. <laughs> it may be one bottle of cristal less the next time you take your cruise. Oh. oh, well. Well, life is so hard and good help is so hard to find these days. I don't know what we'll do. What is this country coming to? Everything seems broken. Uh -oh. Anyway. <laughs> As well, today, um, even though many conservatives will claim up and down, or actually yesterday probably, sorry, not today, uh, will claim that they never received it. Canadians did get their carbon rebate yesterday. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I didn't so get you, mine yet. I'm having trouble trying to file my taxes right now because uh, you know how you have to, uh, like a, a CRA login password thingy there? So I had to re-up and get another one because mine had expired. So I got to wait four or five days to get something in the mail to use so I can log in, have full access to my account so I can file and then I'll get my money. Mm -hmm. Bit of a pain in the... Uh, yeah. Yep, um, indeed. So um, in Saskatchewan, however, if you happen to be living there, um, you might want to enjoy this one because that might be the last carbon rebate you're going to get. Mm. Thanks to your premier, Scott Moe who has been charging you a carbon tax since 2019, but only told you about it a couple of days ago. Yeah. And has been charging you carbon tax on electricity all throughout 2023, but you only found out a couple of days ago. <laughs> anyway, um, there is a possibility that the federal government may decide to be magnanimous enough to do a calculation of what your carbon rebate should be, minus the stuff that... Uh, Mo is not collecting it on anymore because you are paying a little bit of it uh, for the parts of it that's embedded in the rest of the products. So maybe uh, the federal government will come up with a calculation. Maybe you will get a check again, but it will be way, way smaller than the $255 per person or somewhere around there uh, that you're uh, per quarter that uh, you're getting now. So, um, yeah, um, not sure. Uh, anyway, if you're from Saskatchewan and uh, uh, let us know how it is uh, that will be working for you over uh, time. Uh, <laughs> not great. And um, oddly enough, uh, when it comes to that type of thing, sorry, I'm just going a little bit of a side here, but uh, yesterday, Premier Scott Moe actually uh, put this out. And some guy from Saskatchewan whose name Eric Bell said, why are wait times double the Canadian average in Saskatchewan? Minister. Shrugs. Um, <laughs> I'll blow this up a little bit, but here we go. That's a little thing right here for uh, knee replacement, knee replacement wait times, and you got numbers from all over Canada. It's 156 days in BC. Oops, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I thought it was on pause. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's 156 days in BC, 188 days in Alberta, 215 in Manitoba, 161 in Canada on average. But in Saskatchewan, it's 318 days. So, um, yeah. That's brutal. Not really good whatsoever. And then uh, yesterday as well, uh, the premier of Saskatchewan put out something saying that, uh, well, there's no place in Canada where 
buying a home is more affordable than in Saskatchewan. And then again, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, oh, buddy boy, you just spent like the last year crisscrossing the country and going to every media you can telling us how everything was unaffordable in Saskatchewan, that it was all Trudeau's fault. And then in the next breath, you say, hey, everybody, you're looking for a cheap place to live. There's no place more affordable than Saskatchewan. So which one is it, buddy? Are you patting yourself on the back because life is so affordable in Saskatchewan or is life so unaffordable because of Trudeau? Uh, everybody's about to go to hell in a handbasket because mm. your message is just a dead inconsistent, my friend. Just so you know. However, um, we all, uh, the budget, uh, a lot of people are saying that uh, they don't know what's left to be read because there's been so many announcements, so close to $40 billion of announcements, about $20 billion of that is loans, um, or for, or maybe it's $20 billion in loans plus uh, $40 billion in announcements. But uh, a lot of people are obviously saying because of all those announcements, there will have to be some tax increases to cover that somehow. And uh, that's been uh, being telegraphed for quite a while that uh, that there would be uh, so you'll get uh, the normal screaming and crying oh what about the rich people and and that'll uh, hopefully die down very quickly um, of course uh, all the conservatives and the most of the media is going to start looking at the top line numbers and looking what the deficit is and you know the debt repayment and all that kind of stuff and how how soon do we get back to balance and you know kind of stuff and that's all very nice but uh, I mean if we're being totally honest those that's pretty much a mindless and useless discussion. I mean, you need to send signals to the international community that you've got some targets and that you've got some guardrails and that type of stuff. And mm -hmm. you know, the, the, there is a sandbox that has limits to which you're you're, you're playing. You got to see in which you're playing. You got to send those signals. But um, you know, uh, when the prime minister came into office, he had promised that within four years the budget would be balanced, even though he was going to spend a little more on deficits. Um, than he had originally said, and you know, then life happens. Then came yes. Trump, then came China, then came climate disasters, then came Ukraine, then came COVID, and you know, right. So, um, I know a lot of people like to buy into that, particularly in the press, especially the breathless press. You know, so, oh my God, you know, he's not, there's no plan to get us to balance the budget. And it's like. It, Anybody who's giving you numbers 10 years, 20 years down the road, even five years down the road, there's so many things that can happen. Like, hey, we're doing a home renovation project over here. We had budgeted a certain amount. We took off some aluminum siding. Oh, guess, guess, guess what? You got some asbestos. There's another nine to $12,000 mm -hmm. that you didn't plan. Because, and, uh, you know, considering that our entire renovation budget to go green was about 50000 an extra twelve, is a pretty big chunk. That's, that's a lot of money. Right. Thanks. So. Well, you know, if we have to, we have to get it abated this year. We have to pay it this year. It goes on our books this year. If we were presenting a budget at the uh, uh, a budget at the end of the year, like you know, how we did this year, uh, when the year's done, our budget would be blown. Mm -hmm. Because you know, it's like both of us. You know, we don't live an uncomfortable life. Uh, but both our salaries combined, twelve uh, twelve thousand dollars is still over ten percent of both our salaries combined pre taxes. That's a uh, it's hard to cut to <laughs> over ten percent of everything else over the course of a year to make sure that your budget balances yes. when you get an unexpected thing, right? So, well, in uh, a household uh, budget too is you don't you. I love how they like to compare uh, right the budget for the country to a household budget. It's like no, it, that's not how it works. It's not how it works, but in certain ways you can make some parallels. I mean, oh, you, have always, you, you always have to understand that with a federal government, with your household budget, you have a life expectancy. Mm -hmm. A nation doesn't necessarily have life expectancy. Right? No. How many of us are 150 something years old? I don't, uh, I don't, but know Canada anybody. is. <laughs> so, you know, Canada can go out and go, go out and get a loan when it's 150 and says, Hey, don't worry. I'll pay it back to you when I'm 202 and the bank will be okay. Yeah, if I go to the bank and say, yeah, if I go to the bank and I say, Hey, can't lend me this money now. I'll pay it back to you when I'm 202. They'll look at me and they'll laugh me out of the bank because I'm not going to reach 202. <laughs> right. I'll reach 112 though, because I'm just stubborn, but I won't reach 200. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big stretch. So, uh, but 
you know, in terms of balancing, in terms of cash flow over the course of a year, or balancing a budget over a year, then yeah, that is somewhat, uh, you know, similar. Like this, you know, you have a, you know, a tree falls on your house. All of a sudden, you have to do something. Well, whoops! Suddenly, k- killer pandemic. Whoops! We yeah. need to do something. It blows a budget. You know, it blows a forecast. Yeah. It blows right. So all this happens. So um, you look at those. I always say, look at those numbers to get a general sense. But don't invest yourself in that a number that's four years down the road and whatnot, because so many things can happen in the life of a nation oh, yeah. that, yeah, that's, so that's more for guidance, right? Mm-hmm. But a lot of the reporting likes to focus on that number. Oh my God, I can't believe they died. Please, Settle down. Just, uh, let's calm down. All right. Hold in, my, in my lifetime, right? And th- this is a thing that happened yesterday. Um, Jamil Giovanni, yes, of course, put out some, put out something, and um, I responded to it. And I don't typically have things that go viral all that often, but mm-hmm. every now and then something does. something does. I mean, now for me, this is viral. I mean, I know viral's in the millions for me when I write something because you know this is Canada and it's politics and you know yeah. so it's a smaller market like this, and you know it's not like I'm. You know, as known as Charles Adler or anything yet. So, you know, I have a li- somewhat limited following. So mm. when I tweet something and it gets about like, you know, it crosses like 30,000 impressions, that's pretty big mm. uh, for, for me. Typically that doesn't happen. There's a lot of things I treat sometimes I think are brilliant and they don't even hit the thousand. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's funny how it's, what, what hits and what doesn't is just anybody's guess. Yeah. That's why you don't try to write to try to make something hit because it just, you never know. Uh, you know, sometimes yeah, I, just, I just write, oh, I like cake, and boom, it's all, oh, wow, 17,000 yeah, yeah. impressions. It's like, oh, great. <laughs> like how, did, how, the, how the heck did that happen? Yeah. So uh, Pierre Podiev, um, well, you know, I'm not going to play the video, but it was his detonation uh, series, his episode two thing. I'll just put it on the screen here so that... Uh, you can uh, show Mr. Grizzly. But this is how uh, Pierre, det- exploding debts and how we can rescue Canada from them. And as oh, soon as yeah. you start play, press play, like this, you see money, detonation, and then all of a sudden people throwing Molotov cocktails in the streets and with fires and th- like, what the fuck? So, <laughs> Scare like, tactics. Yeah, exactly. If you're listening to that with your sound off, uh, you're thinking like, what the hell? And uh, Jamil Giovanni goes, Trudeau's next federal budget is due tomorrow. He wants millennials to think he has our best interests in mind, but the federal debt Trudeau is racking up is being passed on to my generation. My generation. There is hope. We need to elect a new prime minister, Pierre Polyev. Okay, number one. Mm-hmm. Number one. Have you seen how much this guy spends? Yeah. <laughs> Pierre Polyev? Yeah. Right? The National Post literally just put out an article, I think it was on... Um, and this one was really disingenuous, really just disingenuous, on April 12th, going, first reading, Jagmeet Singh is Canada's most expensive MP, Pierre Polyev is the cheapest. That's a total lie. We total know lie. that's a total lie. Yes, because they're talking Complete about... a total lie. Because they're looking only at the constituency office. So they go, yes. Singh expensed more than $500,000 over nine months to run his constituency office. Polyev charged 143201 because that's the headline. But if you keep going down into the article, this is National Post. Now, they do say it. They do say but they it. Try and but it's it. not the headline, <laughs> but they bury it. But when they're talking about, you know, roughly, um, sorry, roughly two dozen MPs from the Prime Minister to the Speaker to the Party Whips are given budgets in addition to what they're allowed to expense as MPs. And it's in these figures that Polyev pulls way ahead of Singh. Yeah, I think you would have made that the headline of the article now, wouldn't you? No, no, because right. they're relying on people not reading the whole story. Yes. In the last three months of 2023, it cost taxpayers around $1.1 million to pay Polyev's expenses as leader of the official opposition and another 35000 to pay for the upkeep of Stornoway. And, of course, there's this other meme going around that shows that Pierre Polyev's Stornoway budget has expense like God knows how much in cleaning products. Yeah. Cleaning oh, remember seventeen thousand dollar water bill. Yeah, uh, I don't know what type of mess they're doing out there to have that much of a bill when it comes to cleaning products, uh, but uh, maybe some of those should come out of your own pocket if you're making that Seems much of a, a mess. Yeah. Well, either they're slobs, mm. 
or cleaning products, Skippy air quotes, is code for something else? It's a good question, huh? Because I don't know. I don't know. I do not know any house that needs to spend that much money on cleaning products. Unless you have like a pack of dogs living in the house. Maybe. Yeah. Now, I, mean, <laughs> I don't think I know that's it's the a, case. I know it's a 19 room house. Is it 19? I thought it was less than that. No, it's a 19 room hearing, mansion. It is 19? So okay. Yeah. But uh, it's only he and his wife. Yeah. Well, and his two children. Kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, they're, they're I'm sure they're babies, not, yeah. Yes. I'm sure they're not using all 19 rooms. Unless they're running a grow up. Oh, no. You don't need to do that. It's legal now, right? Yeah. I wasn't even yeah. suggesting that. That was a joke. It's called sarcasm, people. Settle down. <laughs> Settle down. Actually, if anybody could use to get a little bit of cannabis in their system, I think it's Pierre Polyev. Hmm. Might chill yeah. him out a little bit. So uh, Pierre spends like a drunken sailor on self promotion. Oh, yeah. All right. So that's his personal track record. He spends more than the prime minister. He spends more than Mr. Singh by a lot. So Giovanni is going, you know, Trudeau is racking up so much debt and is passing it on to your generation. Well, Jamil, I'm not sure how old you are, but uh, I am the future generation to whom Brian Mulroney, $314 billion, Mike Harris, $42 billion, and Stephen Harper, $127 billion, passed down massive debt. Yeah. None of them handled a killer pandemic. None Not of them had the one. entire world shut down. Yeah. Yes, Stephen Harper dealt with the financial economic crisis in 2008 because of mortgages and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, the pandemic made that one look like a walk in the park. And uh, this guy and Stephen Harper, if you remember correctly, didn't exactly really excellently manage us out of this because uh, I believe he cut down stimulus way too quickly, thus sending, into a, uh, sending us into a second minor recession. Mm-hmm. I believe he might have been the only leader of a G7 nation to have provoked their country to go into a second recession. Into that. So he wasn't that good. Right. Yes. He got us through it, but he, he got us through it. Uh, but let's remember as well that right before the crisis hit, I believe he was trying to deregulate our banks and our insurance yes, he was. companies, which would have made things way much worse. And then that actually crisis in 2008, oddly enough, ironically for Canada, as bad as it was, made it so that we dodged a bullet. Yeah. That which Harper had planned for us, which would have made things way worse. So, um, you know, well, Harper had that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harper had that. He gets yeah. credit for sort of navigating kind of sort of us through it. You know, for, for a trained, uh, educated economist, he, he's really bad at doing the economy. <laughs> he was terribly bad at doing the economy. That's why they kept on saying all the, you know, it, it's like, it's like, you know, when you go to a restaurant mm -hmm. and the restaurant's called Good Food. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't eat there. They're trying too damn hard. Yeah. It's, it's real. It's rarely ever good. If you have to say it, he, but he's a trained economist, but he's a trained economist. Well, what was he trained to do as an economist? Cause he really wasn't running the economy. <laughs> Go to a restaurant that says food and good times, not yeah. good food, but food and good times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> food and good times. Food and good Is times. Is the food good? No, but we do have it. We do have food. We do have food. And I do not know why my camera just went fuzzy again. No, for some I don't reason. Know. That's really weird because this time I did not come close to it. No. Um, it, it just went on me. Uh, so, yeah. I put all those things. And then, then people turn around and say, oh, yeah, nice move conflating provincial and federal. Uh, there's one taxpayer. Yeah. That's what they yeah, keep on telling us, right? Both of them. Yeah. So whether it's a federal government or my provincial government that has racked up the debt. I still got to pay it. I still got to pay it. <laughs> so yes, I'm adding them both. Um, so $314 billion, Brian Mulroney, Mike Harris, $42 billion. And Brian, Mike Harris also cut off all the grants for uh, mm -hmm. colleges and university just as I was starting. So uh, I was among the first one, the first generation that graduated with $27,000 of student debt. Thank you, conservatives. And uh, Stephen Harper, $127 billion. None of them handled a global killer pandemic. So please, Mr. Giovanni, do not piss on my leg and tell me that the PPCPC 
legacy is going to be any different, especially when you consider that your current leader spends like a drunken sailor on shore leave. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, um, and, ooh, Canadian conservative Twitter had a meltdown. Of course they did. Of course they did. Had a meltdown. All you're doing is blaming Tories. Uh, no, I think actually what I did is I had a conversation with a conservative about the conservative track record because this conservative was promising me that the next conservative is going to do something that every other conservative that has governed under whom I've lived in my entire life has never been able to do. Hmm. Uh, sorry if I'm a little skeptical. And that's not blaming Tories. That's saying, um, dude, here's your track record. Yeah. You haven't done it once in my lifetime. And there hasn't been a federal conservative government that has left Canada in a surplus. Everybody goes, to oh, well, Harper did. No. A surplus has to be structural. Not just on paper. Yes, he fire sailed. He sold GM shares at fire sale prices in order to create the illusion of a balanced budget. But if you oh, have to fire sell assets in order to balance your budget, your budget isn't balanced. <laughs> at least not structurally, it isn't. And then you got to remember that uh, Stephen Harper got to that balanced budget not only by selling the GM shares, but for a couple of years after 2008, making these grandiose announcements that he was going to spend this money on something. And then after he made the announcement, tapping the people responsible for the spending on the shoulder and going, oh, if he could not spend all of that or any of it, that would be great. So at the end of the year, I could tell people, oh my God, look at what a good financial manager I am. That's creating a structural deficit in all the programs. Mm. Right. If you tell veterans, hey, I'm going to send a $400 million your way, and they said, I just released $200 million of that. Well, uh, you just created a $200 million hole while creating expectations that that money would be spent. You just created a structural deficit in your program. So when people say, oh, well, you know, Trudeau came in and he promised he would only have small deficits, but he had to have bigger ones. Yeah, because there were structural deficits in programs yeah. that accumulated over three or four years. All of a sudden, he got into government and says, holy crap, this program has been starved. We need to find more money. Kind of how it goes, right? When you decide that you're not going to spend some money on something on which you absolutely need to spend money, and you delay that, you make it cost more. A lot more. Later. That's how Harper screwed us. Over and over and over and over again. <laughs> so, <laughs> say more than once. Yeah. So... um when you get this, uh, oh, that's so cute, Lola. Lola got <laughs> dressed up too. Yay. So yes, when you um, look at the top line numbers, uh, don't panic. What you want to get is a sense that there is some type of discipline. So um, you'll, pro and like I mentioned yesterday, you'll probably want to see at least a deficit number that does that does not go up. You'll want to see some projections for it going down. I don't know if the budget will present any time that we're going to reach balance. That's clearly not important. A lot of people will make a big deal of that. If that's all they're saying, mm -hmm. it's like, oh my God, they're taxing the wealthy. It's going to destroy everything and there's no plan to get the thing into bud balance. It means it's a good budget. Because that's pretty much the boilerplate statement that you say when you've got nothing else, really. So, and there's going to probably be a lot of things. So, so oh, well, the kids are going to hate this. This is not the, the typical thing, right? This is not going to work. So you'll get that type of stuff, but let's wait because it seems that the federal government uh, is indicating that despite two and a half weeks of wall to wall announcements, there is still even more new stuff in the budget that they have not mentioned. Yeah, that's I can't wait to say what it is. Yeah, I, I really am eager to hear it. I, I do want to know what they plan on doing. Uh, we we could speculate a million things other than the, the only thing that I've really heard is that the wealthy will be paying more. How much? I don't know. Is it a fair share? I don't know. I don't know any of that. I'm not wealthy, so. <laughs> yeah. I think the wealthy folks that may pay a little bit more in tax are still going to be okay. They'll bitch and complain. Non-stop. Do you know how much money I paid in tax last year? Yeah, that's uh, triple what I earned. You're not getting sympathy from me. It's triple what I earned. I'm sorry. 
I don't see how I can be passionate or compassionate or empathetic when you paid three times the amount of tax that I earn in a year. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm so sorry you made so much money. That... Yeah. I think you're doing okay. You're not skipping meals because you have to. Yeah. Uh, I know this. You know this who is, you are. I know this is very hard for you. Yes, it's um, very difficult for you. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> We want safer streets. We want to stop the crime. Okay. It's going to cost money. How but do I don't want to pay to for that. It? Sorry, not how it works. Not how it works. You want the service? You got to pay. And it's not a paper use service. It's a pay in your taxes service. Yes. So that everybody in your neighborhood benefits. Yeah, Canadians, uh, especially on the conservative side of the ledger, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but the lifestyle into which we've grown accustomed actually costs money. Yeah. yeah. Paved roads, indoor plumbing. You know, little things you like know, that. Those little comforts, traffic lights. <laughs> you know, I don't know about you, but when I'm a passenger in the car, I love not being T-boned at intersections. I'm a fan of that. Yeah. I'm a fan of that. Traffic lights. Yeah. So they go, where do I, I never get anything for my tax dollars. So yeah, every time you go to a T intersection, you don't get T-bone. That's your tax dollars at work, buddy. <laughs> every time you flush, it goes down. That's your tax dollars at work, buddy. Yeah. And that's your, your municipal <laughs> taxes. That's municipal. Yes. It's like, I never get anything for my taxes. Oh, God. Dude, you're soft. <laughs> You've gone way soft. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, unlike a lot of people in Canada, I'm quite happy to pay my taxes because I know I get a lot more than I put in. Um, and uh, if you are a rational thinking person, uh, you probably know that too. Because I'm sure many of us aren't willing to uh, plow the entire street Hell in no. front of where we live in order to get out. We kind of think it's a good idea to pull all our money together and pay someone to do that. <laughs> oh, that damn socialism. <laughs> Imagine the gall of people putting their money together mm -hmm. in order to do things collectively that they couldn't do on their own. Well, and what kind of insanity is that? You look at the Nordic countries, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, where they have very high taxes. And if you ask, a citizen of one of those countries, how do they feel about the tax? They're all very happy and proud to pay them. And the wealthy pay their fair share in those countries too. And they don't have a problem with it because it benefits everybody because they believe in community. They believe in helping their friends, family, and others give them a, a bit of a lift up so that they yeah. don't suffer. And I think you used the right word there. I think a lot of people of the, a lot of people of the uh, negative uh, type Mm -hmm. the anti-everythings, they um, tend to uh, confuse the word communism with community. community. There's a difference. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> there is a difference. Oh, man. All right. So uh, we're going to wait for this budget. It's going to uh, be interesting. We all, like I said, there's, there were rental measures already announced. There were housing measures. Uh, Sean Fraser uh, announced the other day a whole suite of stuff with regard to housing, which we haven't had time to go into yet, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that one is, uh, according to liberal claims, take them with a grain of salt, um, but is set to a plan that would create, I think was uh, 3.9 million housing units of some kind. I'm guessing yes, that is houses and, uh, and apartments combined yes. by 2030. Um, I, I would think that and maybe MDUs student residents and stuff. Of that. Yeah, uh, MDUs, multiple dwelling units, yes. like apartment complexes, things like that. That will be a big part of it because that can be built much quicker than single family homes. They're not talking single family homes. Sure. Strawberry box. Sure. Uh, post war Modular. type housing will be part of it. Absolutely. But it's going to be more MDUs than anything else. So apartment yep. buildings, yep. Et, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. And they're like, well, you, you'll have to do this many per month to make that uh, goal achievable by this day. And I go, yeah. So they're creating, not like we haven't done before creating construction jobs. And yeah, we've done it before. 
We're like, nobody is reinventing the wheel here. No, this is not new. Now, you know what we're going to need to build these homes, though? Skilled tradespeople. We don't have enough of that. That we may not have enough of. We don't. We yeah. simply don't. So we're going to have to create them and import them from other parts of the world. Simple as that. Yep, indeed. Ah, Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. All right, so kids and cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show, Budget Edition. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Of course, sharing is caring, right? And word of the mouth is priceless. You would agree? And you have mouths. You would agree? So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. <laughs> if you would like to make sure you do not miss an episode, thanks to the Ray Girl, you don't have to. That QR code that just appeared beneath my chin brings you to our pod page. That's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And if you go there and click subscribe, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. And if you'd like to help us in an any other way, well then, you can make like Kit Elaine and go to our True North Eager Beaver YouTube page and click like, share, and subscribe. There you are, Elaine, right on time. Smash that button before you leave. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you would like to help us in other ways, and thank you to the kits yesterday who uh, did send us a little something to the Eager Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund. Um, very uh, generous and uh, of you. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't have the thing brought up, so I can't give you personal thanks at the moment, but I will do it. Yes, you know I always do eventually. Um, but uh, thank you for that. And if you would like to help us by uh, following their lead and making some donations to the Emergency Hydration Fund, the QR code that uh, to which Mr. Grizzly is pointing right now brings you to our coffee page. That's coffee, ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And therefore, you will find, not therefore, but there you will find our tip jar. And if you want to make a little contribution there, we very, very, very much appreciate that. Of course, everything goes back into the show. And uh, we hope that you love and appreciate it because we work very hard. And it's a labor of love, though, however, yeah. uh, to bring this to you. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Uh, yes. Because democracy is something that you do, please do write those letters. And if you happen to be living in the province of Alberta and would like to vote in the Alberta NDP leadership race, you have until the 22nd of this month to make sure that uh, you get to, you acquire your membership in order to be able to do that. So please do so because democracy is not a spectator sport. And as we keep on telling you on the show, party leadership races and nomination races is actually where the democracy is really at. That's where you need to get involved. If you want better candidates, that's where you need to show up and vote. Not only on the generals. All right. And when I say generals, I mean general election days, federal and provincial. Um, all right. I believe that is everything. So from the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying it could be a tough world out there. So please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, some words of wisdom, please. Um, the words of wisdom today, I think we're going to come from um, Stormy Daniels. I'm going to put it on the screen here. Yes. I love her. So now he doesn't like handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, from Theo Mudakis, his cartoon, his political cartoon that will appear on <laughs> today's Toronto Star. Putting it on the screen right now. And it's a picture of Jagmeet Singh. With yes. an NDP Axe the Tax orange t-shirt it's that says, sometimes you got to go with the flow. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't even get to that yet on the show with a <sighs> NDP major flip-flop. Huge flip-flop. Like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, thanks for reminding me. I need to make a note of that because yeah, we'll I need to, to talk about that on the show. Because, oh, it took us place at 48 hours for Jug Meat Seed. Well, Jug, actually, it was a double flip-flop mm -hmm. because it's a position against... Well, not against, I guess, but it's the, siding with the conservatives was the first flip-flop, and then I guess he got an earful because two years later he flip-flopped again. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, we will, Mr. Grizzly, I will ask you to cue the cock, and I'll come back. With you are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast.
The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. Sorry, my mouth was full. Um, it's, <laughs> <laughs> um, before we leave, um, yesterday was the first day. Sorry, I might have to um, need a slight change in um, chapeau. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hurry up late. <laughs> All right. <laughs> first day of uh, Trump uh, trial. Um, he's complaining, uh, whining, I can't go to the Supreme Court. I can't go to my son's graduation, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, welcome to consequence culture, motherfucker. Uh, (laughs) So, uh, 34 felony counts for allegedly falsifying bookkeeping and accounting records related to payments made to Stormy Daniels. The case was filed by DA, uh, from New York, Alvin Bragg. He will contend that action started in October, 2016, shortly after the leak of the now infamous access Hollywood grabber by the Kit Kat video that Michael Cohen, his former fixer, paid Stephanie Clifford, a.k.a. Stormy Daniels, $130,000 U.S. prior to the 2016 election in an attempt to interfere with the election uh, so that she would keep quiet about an affair she had with Donald Trump, who was married at the time to his wife, who I believe was pregnant or had just delivered or something. I don't remember exactly. Yes. Uh, Here's the thing, um, little known fact. Trump he says that this was to save himself in ver- embarrassment with Melania. Uh, that's not actually true because um, Mike, he instructed Michael Cohen to actually delay making the payment to Clifford as much as he could. Hopefully it would happen after the election. And if it happened, it happened after the election, he was planning to stiff her again. Of course. Of course. Yes. So this was not about Melania's feelings. Uh, I also remember the chunk of money was given to Karen McDougal, who was a former Playboy playmate, and to a doorman who was circulating a very salacious story about Trump at the time. So they tried to make all of those go away as well. Uh, the DA intends to show that there are emails depicting rising panic in the Trump camp because Daniels would be living proof that Trump was not only doing locker room talk as mm-hmm. he said, after the video came out. Um, I gotta go, was, dude. Like, I'm late. I gotta oh, go. Sorry. All right. We gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. Like, I'm, I'm, I am late. I'll see okay. you guys later. <laughs>